What's up, everybody, and welcome to TVCaptive.com presents the As Seen on TV podcast for The Vampire Diaries, Season 5, Episode 16, While You Were Sleeping. This week on The Vampire Diaries, another Stefan Doppelganger is discovered. The travelers help cure Damon and Elena. There's more to live than meets the eye. Not a Transformer. And finally, Damon and Elena break up. Again. Or do they? Or do they not? I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm your host, Mike, and joining me for this oddly entertaining episode is Dom. How's it going? I'm on this side of the were. I'm on this side of the box again. Oh, I see is my face, so I can't tell which direction you're sitting in. You're that way. Yeah, you're over there. Okay. That doesn't help. <laughs> no. So, uh, what would you think of this episode? I, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to feel um, mm. with Catherine gone. Uh, mm. I was really hoping we were going to get some answers for Catherine, but at the same time, I figure that's something that they're going to put on the back burner for a little while. That's kind of a Vampire Diaries thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they put a lot of stuff on the back burner, try to let you forget about it, and then bring it in when they're positive that you forgot about it. So, yeah. on one hand, I was expecting Catherine answers, but deep down I knew we weren't going to get any. Um, we kind of guessed we were going to see some travelers and, and stuff like that um, be the new antagonist um, till the end of the, the series now, or the season. Um, I think they did a pretty good job. I, I was kind of skeptical going into it. I didn't know uh, if they were going to be interesting enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are. Yeah, they did so, it pretty good there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Start off um, with Elena having a whole bunch of dreams. Just that seem seemingly real dreams, but in all these dreams, uh, is, do they all add up to mean that she's angry with her friends deep down for not noticing that uh, Catherine had replaced her? Yeah, I definitely think that's what they were getting at, because uh, it starts off with the first one, she's dancing on the table, she takes her top off, she's having a shot with her brother, that's something she would not do um, as Elena, and uh, she's, she's kind of having these, these flashbacks of memories that didn't actually happen we don't know for sure maybe they did kind of happen maybe they're bleeding a, a little bit from reality and elaine is putting a little spin on it um but that's a scene we have not seen so at this point i think we can't we don't know for sure um right. so yeah i think she is uh she's kind of angry at her friends for not realizing that while she was locked away that this was Catherine replacing her um mm -hmm. you know because then the then at the same time, though, the reason why I say they're bleeding through is because there's no way she would have known about Aaron whatsoever. There's not even a clue as to that. And true. She, true. Had a, she had a dream about Aaron being dead and being bitten on the neck, which is exactly what Damon did. So um, but then again, Catherine wasn't even there for that. So it was maybe something she would maybe it was a fear, a deep down fear or something. Could be. Aaron, she has no what hasn't heard a word from him. She doesn't know what happened to him. He's disappeared. She can't get a hold of him. So maybe she killed him. Yeah. Or no, maybe Catherine her killed him. Who knows? Could be. Yeah. She was really worried that she did it as mm. you know Catherine did it as Elena, and she was really upset by that. But uh, mm. you know, it turned out she wasn't. I think she was kind of relieved. Yeah. So um. One aspect that Elena discovers is that Catherine was writing in her diary. Yeah, that actually, that whole scene, I forgot about that. So you just went, that, that was hysterical. Um, <laughs> I, I, she opens the book up like she's going to go write to kill some time because she's sealed off in this room. And she's got nowhere to go. She's got nothing to do. So mm. pick up her diary and she's going to write about it. But then she notices Catherine had written in. And we saw that in one episode, but apparently there had been multiple entries in there, at least two that she read off. And uh, this this actually causes another one of the, the hallucinations that she had. But um, <laughs> just seeing that those scenes play out from Elena's perspective of how they could have gone down, um, that was just oh my god, that was entertaining. That was really entertaining. Mm -hmm. Great job there. So yeah, the, it was the, the Catherine diary that we we talked about a few episodes ago, I think it was two or three episodes ago, um, it paid off. Uh, it was kind of a funny moment then, but it, it hit a bigger moment now. It was. It was is really well done. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, moving right along here. Liv, the not-transformer, I'm sad. What 
bigger role does Liv play in all of this stuff? She's clearly Optimus Prime. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, Autobots roll out. I took her for granted. Usually when they introduce a new character, I'm like, what are they hiding? Mm -hmm. And I always try to find something deeper behind the character. Liv snuck under the radar. Um, I, th I genuinely <laughs> thought that she was a witch that didn't know what she was doing. Like, mm -hmm. She was hiding her powers. Like, the way you first meet her, she seems clumsy. And this... They reveal this is all a charade now. Like, she's pretending to have her powers fail and not be able to do them and being a, a new witch and playing up to Bonnie. So, obviously, she's got an ulterior motive of her own. Whether or not she's going to turn out to be a villain is, is a whole other story. Um, but, uh, I don't know what her agenda is. I don't know if she's, she was working with Catherine. I don't know if she was um, working working with the travelers yeah um it could be both um i don't know yeah <laughs> i honestly don't know because I, I i was you know as you said you think you know oh, they introduce a new character what's their past what are they hiding i actually legitimately thought that you know Liv was exactly what we were getting at face value she was un, you know she had witchy powers that she did not know how to control and Bonnie was actually, you know, in the, mm, I don't know, it, in using her to get, you know, for, you know, for Bonnie's purposes, that she would teach her how to unlock her powers and do all kinds of stuff like that. So I figured, hey, this is nice, you know, finally, someone who's not a duplicitous hag and crushed my hopes and dreams tonight. Yeah. I don't She's know. A witches, we haven't really met too many oh, we friendly don't know witches. Yet. No, we haven't. Usually in, they're in crazy. Both, in both of the series, most yeah. Bonnie's like the only good one. All the other ones have like some evil agenda. Yeah, Bonnie's the only one who's legitimately not, you know, and, and hiding Graham's. anything. Bonnie's, and Graham's. Yeah, Bonnie's grandmother. But yeah. As far as we know. Or as far as we knew. Yeah. Well, anyway. So the first thing we mentioned in our little recap. They find another Stefan Doppelganger. We were just talking about this last week. Another one has to exist. Another bunch yeah. had to have existed. So, he exists. He's alive. He's an EMT in Atlanta. Pretty cool. So, um, will they, uh, they being Caroline, uh, Stefan somewhat, and Enzo, have an issue killing an innocent person to save themselves? <sighs> With Enzo going, I don't think that's going to Oh, Enzo's be not going to give a shit, but Caroline yeah. and Stefan. Yeah, um, I, they kind of know what they're going in, getting into by going mm -hmm. there in the first place. Um, I don't think they themselves would be able to do that. I think Stefan is, is left behind. He can't go. The Travelers have him, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Caroline and Enzo go, and I don't think Caroline would be able to do it. I don't even know for sure if Stefan would be able to do it. Um, but with Enzo there, that kind of guarantees it's going to get done. Um, but mm -hmm. whether or not Caroline causes some moral uh, issues between that and prolongs it a little bit. We may mm -hmm. see that. But um, the thing that gets me is how come all the doppelgangers we're meeting just happen to be the same age? You know, like... <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're right. <laughs> Why, um... I understand because they're being played by the same actors or everything, but... but like, I understand Do some makeup way. or something. Make them a little older. Okay, I understand Elena and Catherine, okay? Catherine was a young woman when she was turned into a vampire, and the series started with Elena in high school. She was a teenager. So, you know, that. Now, as far as... Um, but then we had Amara before all that. Yeah, Amara, I mean, you know what? Ancient Greece, was it? Mm -hmm. Travelers, whatever. Okay, so Ancient Greece, she was probably a young, young woman at the time of her immortality being enacted. So then... That's fine. I can accept all that. Now here, like you said, with Stefan. Silas, all right, I can accept that. Stefan is what it is. He was in his 20s or whatever. But why does this doppelganger have to be the same age? It's just why, all of a sudden when they need him, he just happens to be there of the age, the same yeah. exact age that Stefan is. Like, like he was born the day Stefan was, you know, well, no, he was... <sighs> he was born... However old Whatever, Ste 18, well, 20 however, years ago. 
Yeah, however old Stefan was when he was turned is exactly how old this guy is. Yeah. Like, why can't he be in his 60s or his 80s, like an old man or something like yeah, that? It's, it's just a little too... It's too much to believe at this point. Yeah, it, it's too perfect. That That's all the of these, these... We have three Stefan doppelgangers, or, or I should say three Silas mm-hmm. doppelgangers, line up in four Amara ones, because we had Amara, we had one between Amara and Catherine... Yeah, exactly. Then we had Catherine, and then Elena, so that's four. Um, I'm guessing all the other Stefan ones have existed and lo- are, you know, dead. Lost to time. Yeah, it's just well, the fact that, I don't know, that, that's just... Well, we say, we call them Amara doppelgangers and Stefan doppelgangers. No, it's Amara's doppelgangers and Silas doppelgangers. Right, right. Is technically the right way to put it, if we're going right. that route. But anyway, on this topic, why do they want Stefan alive... The Travelers, as opposed to this other Atlanta doppelganger. And now my second point is, why do they have to kill him? Why, you know, is do they need... What's the point of only having one of them alive? What? Well, that, they said the blood is inactive. Um, it's got to be the last doppelganger. Um, okay. For the blood I must to have missed work. That they, said, they said Stefan and Elena's blood uh, combined does nothing right now. So for them to be able to use it, they'd have to use the last doppelganger. So if they were to kill um, mm-hmm. Stefan's doppelganger, Stefan's blood would be compatible again because he's the, the most recent doppelganger because the other one's dead. So it okay. would work. Um, I gotcha. I gotcha. I, mi- I must have missed that part. Right. So so why would they want Stefan alive as opposed to the, the one in Atlanta, the MT? Uh, I think primarily because... The one, the one in Atlanta is human, and mm-hmm. there's a risk that if they kill Stefan and want to use the, we don't have his name yet, but when they want to use that the the EMT, if something happens to him, then they're out of doppelgangers. Right. Well, see, yeah, I was just thinking that Stefan has the possibility of living forever. Right. Versus this other guy who does not. Unless right. they turned him into a vampire. But I'm curious now, are all the doppelgangers uh, descendants of each other? Mm. Like somewhere in the family tree, like not necessarily their sons and daughters. Obviously, you know, Stefan has, didn't have a daughter or anything like that, and yeah. Damon didn't. But we don't know if they're aunts or uncles and their cousins and it's seven th- cousins 32 times removed and like... 2,000 years down the line, you, it's so right. hard to trace it. I mean, right. I, I read I was a statistic. kind of under the impression that they were related in some way. I read a statistic somewhere that, like, an o- either an overwhelming population of the world, like in the 80 or 90 percent, is related to Genghis Khan in some way, hmm. shape, or form, <laughs> because of all the, you know, screwing around he did while he was conquering. Huh. So, I mean, that, and that's only, like, what, 600 years of genetic diversification? So this is 2,000 years. So, I mean, a lot of people are related probably to, you know, the original doppelganger people. Well, 91% of statistics are made up 42% of the time. <laughs> good point. Very good point. I'm just saying, though, 2,000 <laughs> years of yeah. genetic diversification, unless, you know... right. Yeah, so I don't know. I was, I was under happen. the impression when what was it season one or season two? Mm. I think it was season one when they were looking for Catherine. Yes, uh, and they were looking for relatives. And I remember, mm-hmm. was it season one? I, I want to say season two. It was when Damon and and Alaric were teaming up. So I want to say season uh, two. Oh yeah, I think that was two. Yeah, um, and they went and found uh, his wife's old uh, classroom, and it had the Petrova family tree in it and like i remember because right, they right. were trying to find something a related to cat yeah between elena and Catherine. so i guess they are all related yeah that, i was i was under the impression that they were related so i don't know well anyway um yeah they want stefan alive hmm. who knows i mean, I mean one sub question what are they going to use this blood for what's it going to do they're special we're not getting an answer, obviously. Uh, it's got to be something to do with the traveler thing. We we know one of their their abilities is they can um, jump bodies. 
another one of their abilities apparently is they could blink doppelgangers. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they're trying to bring Catherine back. Um, I don't know why they would want to. I don't know like why. Maybe they're trying to bring um, Silas back. Like their why? goal, their goal was to kill him. Yeah, why would they want him back? But did like all of a sudden they killed him and realize, oh crap, he had a piece of information we needed. We need him back, and we'll kill him again. Yeah, I don't really know. Like maybe, maybe their goal is to kill all immortal beings. And um, well, yeah, it was stated at some point that the travelers don't like the whole immortality thing. Right. So that was their their original goal with Silas. But maybe, maybe this has something to do with that at some point. Maybe they're trying to figure out a way to kill originals. We don't know. Yeah, good point. That's interesting. Well, anyway, moving on. We're introduced to... I just threw a pencil for no apparent good reason. We're introduced to Luke. This yeah, I got the point. Yeah. <laughs> We're introduced to Luke. What's really your impressions of this man named Luke? Um... We, we were talking about the this a little bit last episode, uh, that they were going to introduce uh, a a gay character into the the series uh kind of like they did with josh on the um the originals uh Mm -hmm. i forgot about that until um they mentioned him and he seemed uh kind of like live when when they introduced him very naive to everything going on around him i didn't suspect much it seemed like Mm -hmm. he was somebody uh that Catherine was feeding off of and uh you know he had mentioned that he broke up with his brother or broke up with his brother, wow, Ooh. broke up with his boyfriend in um, Mexico and mm-hmm. came back early from spring break, and um, that's why he was there. Yep. Um, so I didn't really think much of it. That, that's kind of where I left that until um, we see when we, we find out Liv has been faking all this whole time, um, he ends up being Liv's brother. Yeah. And that's why that's why I was saying brother before. I <laughs> was... Yeah, and it's yeah. funny. She walks into the room, you know, goes to change, is like, ah, what are you doing here? And hey, that was a pretty funny comment. Like, I'm gay and I'm your brother. You are literally the least attractive person to me in the world. Right. <laughs> but um, then all of a sudden, you know, Liv just <clears throat> with her hands and a thousand candles light. Thousands of candles. Yeah. yeah. A room full a of candles. Yeah, yeah, so that's when we knew she was faking the whole time. So apparently uh-huh. he's in on this too. So Yeah. Who the hell are they? Is he a warlock? I don't know. Mm. Um, like, he was faking his compulsion. We know that much, mm-hmm. so he's yes. on Vervain. Yeah. Um, he... I would assume Liv is as well. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, are they travelers? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. There might be some link. Who knows what we got going on here? Because travelers are kind of witchy, too. Like, they're casting spells. So we don't know if travelers can be witches, if witches can be travelers, vice versa. Yeah, we don't really have a lot of information on that. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely interested to see more of these characters. They're and... the two characters that at first glance didn't seem like there was much to them, and then they turned out to be Optimus Prime and, and Megatron. Mm-hmm. So while we're on the topic of travelers, they get, they figure out, you know, they have a cure for the virus Damon's infected with. And they figure out a way to make a cure for the version that Elaine is infected with. So they give the cures, and both Damon and Elena are fixed this episode. After, I mean, Elena was infected for one episode. So were you surprised that they were cured this quickly and they didn't drag it out to like the end of the season? I kind of was. Um, yeah. I me expected too. this to go on for a little bit, but then when it comes down to it, like, Damon and Elena wouldn't be able to be near each other they'd want to kill each other uh mm-hmm. they'd want to kill their friends all their friends are mm-hmm. vampires matt's like the only one but they just turned they'd consider turning matt and feeding off of him so mm-hmm. they really couldn't be around anyone at that point what are they like a werewolf like tyler is tyler the only one that they that they could drink tyler's blood though so they're gonna attack tyler um mm. so there's there's no just straight up werewolves in the vampire diaries anymore like, they're all, just yeah. the regular ones are all gone. They're either in New Orleans or just not around. Gone. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so they kind of, it kind of had to get resolved quickly. I guess it did, yeah. At first glance, you didn't expect it, but when, when it comes down to it and you really sit and think about it, 
they didn't have another option. They couldn't drag it out. There's the realistically wouldn't work. The two of their main cast members would have been locked in chains for <laughs> multiple episodes, and that can only be entertaining for so long. True. The so, probably the funniest moment of uh, Damon and Elena though was when uh, when they're on the phone and Damon was like, oh, "I was wondering why you had so many weird Instagram pictures uh, being posted lately." And she's like, "What?" <laughs> He's like, "I'm just kidding." Wow. Do you, do you think yeah. Catherine would have started posting pictures to Instagram? Um, maybe if it suited her purpose for some reason. <laughs> anyway, um, speaking of Damon. Why do you think it took him so long to tell Elena that he killed Aaron? Like, he did it the night that they, you know, broke up. Right. Um, well, then he's sitting with her on the phone, and she clearly has questions about Aaron, and she wants to contact mm-hmm. him, and Damon's just putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. I, I want to say Damon actually wanted to man up and do it face-to-face. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he would have probably... I think at this point he regrets it, and he was drawing out telling her because he knows like she's going to hate him for quite a while because yeah, I think, of that. I think that was like a, a secondary concern. I think he actually more wanted to do it face-to-face. I think that's something. Yeah, I'm... like, Elena, I did it. I'm sorry. I killed the bastard because, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, it kind of put Elena in this moment of doubt where she was doubting herself whether or not she did it, and... uh you know, that that was a bad place to put it in. But I think at the same time, that put a little relief on her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when Damon made his uh, announcement, it wasn't nearly as bad. It wasn't pure pissed off. It was kind of like a, oh, you a killed little... him. Meaning I, he's like, oh, you bastard, you killed him. Well, that's okay. I guess I didn't kill him, so that's better. Yeah, it's a little relief and anger at the same time. So it, it softens did. the blow. It probably did help to soften the blow, yeah. Yeah. So right after this, Elena and Damon agree that they're volatile. Um, he's He said, you know, I killed Aaron because of how much control you have, just to show how much control you had over me. And she's like, I'm still here, which shows how much control you have over me. So after that, they break up. They're done. I think, what, 15, 20 seconds go by and yeah, they're on the each most. other? Yeah. Yeah, at the most. 20 seconds go by and all of a sudden they're ripping each other's clothes off and they're in bed. Thus, the early beginning of this episode, they break up again or do they or don't they? <sighs> I'm in a glass case of emotion. I could I could spoil things and tell you exactly where the book went, but um, but, I, but I'm not gonna I'm not going to spoil things for people out there. Because they haven't really been following the book, so to speak, but no, oh. they kind of have a uh, little bit too. But um, from what I read about the books, Elena's a grade A bitch. In yeah, the books. she was. There, so there's like, some weird stuff too, like, and she ends up turning into an angel and stuff. Yeah, and so I mean, like, like this is just whew, yeah, completely. So, I don't know if we're ever gonna see angels drop into the Vampire Diaries. Like, I don't know. We may, yeah, who knows? but. I don't know, but, um, I don't know. So what's I want to say, I want to say they're done, um, for the, the sole fact of the off screen romance that they had. Yeah. So Um, is this, was this breakup sex? Yeah, probably. Hmm. Um, and, and then we have the fact that the doppelgangers are always meant to be together. Right, so that's kind of something lingering that we haven't heard in a while. Nobody's There's mentioned that wee it. A little bit, yeah. So it's it's about time for them to uh, bust that out again soon. Yeah. Right. Who knows? So I I don't even. Th- this whole thing, just. I'd I'd love to see uh, Damon and Elena stay together, but realistically, I I don't see that happening. Maybe mm-hmm. they'll get back together somewhere down the line or something, but I think right I... now it's done. I want their, you know what? I would love, yeah, Damon and Elena staying together is okay. I want to see Caroline and Stefan get together. Because it's going that direction. <laughs> that little moment when uh, Stefan woke up after what the Travelers did to him, and he's like, Rebecca? No, I'm just kidding. Lexi? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, like... They're really good friends, but you know what? I, it's going that road. I it swear is. it's going down that path. And by the end of this season, there's going to be, you know, something. 
more there. Right. Sparks are going to fly. Yeah, I don't know what this means for Tyler. And then Tyler's going to look at her like he's pooping again <laughs> and walk out of the room. <laughs> It's like, oh, so how was it? I wish know, we had that getting... face to pull up right now. I, I can't mimic the face. It's impossible. No, no way. It was just, I mean, he was trying for rage too hard. And it, seriously, he just looked like, walked down the stairs. I have to go poop now. Was exactly what his face told. And then he walked away. Like, <sighs> Yeah. I don't know. So, anyway. Anything else on this episode before we get into the next one? I miss Claire Holt. I think we all do. Ish. I was hoping we were going to see a, a quick cameo from Rebecca, like on her way through passing out of New Orleans. Because, um, mm. Mr. Cole we may is in, still. In what? It's in Virginia? Yeah, Virginia to Louisiana. It's about a day's drive. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's a. It's not like a you know a full day's drive. It's like I don't know, twelve hours maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I was hoping to just see her kind of pass through, say her goodbyes to them, mm-hmm. and then uh, take off because she didn't really say much. Like she's she had a little moment with Matt when she left, but mm-hmm. it was about yeah, it. I honestly, she, thought, she came yeah. back for Catherine's death. Right, she was there for that very brief run in though. Like didn't get a whole lot, so it would just be nice to kind of close that up on this series as well. Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, okay, it says it's a thousand miles from Norfolk, Virginia to New Orleans. So, I mean, best guess. But anyway, so next episode, right, mm-hmm. is called Rescue Me. Rescue who? I don't know, me. Rescue so, you? I don't know. Before the synopsis, we just get this quick five-word statement. Marcos arrives in Mystic Falls. Hmm. Marcos is the the traveler guy, right? That they were talking yeah, he's about. He's the leader of the travelers. That's okay. all we got about him. Okay. So, in order to keep Stefan from being harmed by Sloan and the travelers, Caroline and Enzo agree to make a trip to Atlanta to find a newly discovered doppelganger. Caroline is so okay. So we know that's happening. Right. We talked about that. It's yep. gonna happen. I want to know what his name is gonna be. I'm curious. It could be anything. That's probably what I'm the most interested about next episode, is just finding out the, the doppelganger's name. Steve. It's going to begin with an S. His name is Steve. Steve. S- Stefan Silas Steve. Stuart. S- Samuel. Sam, even. Who knows? It's going to begin with an S. If it doesn't begin with an S, I won't be upset, but I'll just be like, oh, disappointed. You can continue the alliteration there. Yeah. But anyway... Caroline is surprised when Enzo opens up to her about his past. Maybe Enzo's got a little crush on the blondie. Mm, maybe. Well, anyway, Damon and Elena spend an awkward... So Damon and Elena are not... It seems, based on this sentence, that they're still friendly with each other. Okay. So, or still an item. But anyway, Damon and Elena spend an awkward afternoon at Jeremy's parent-teacher conference. Where they hear bad news about his behavior at school. Hmm. This sounds so funny. Considering I don't see... Jeremy's still in high school, right? Yeah. So I don't see this as... I don't see him as a high school. That's why this just sounds weird. Um, Bad news about his behavior. Afterwards, Damon reluctantly tells Elena upsetting news about Jeremy's personal life. Upsetting news about Jeremy's personal life? I don't know what that could be. I don't know. We already know that they're not actually brother and sister, so that's not going to be upsetting. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe something with Bonnie. Maybe. It's got to be. It's the only Um, personal thing he has left. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, because Liv has been eyeing him up constantly. Maybe Liv and him got freaky, and we just haven't heard about it yet. Didn't didn't Luke mention something about how's our little anchor doing or something like that? So maybe they're looking to control the other side. No. Ooh. Ooh, good one. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Good theory there. So they would kidnap Bonnie. I uh, will say. Anyway, Bonnie has an unsettling encounter with Luke and learns more about his family history. So I'm guessing this, the Liv faking, it's going to come out in some shape or form. Could be, yeah. Okay. Liv fills Jeremy in on the tra- on the rumors about the Traveler's next move. And demonstrates her considerable power. So, link between live and travelers. 
Mm -hmm. uh, maybe she's a witch and uh, fighting against the travelers. Or maybe she is a traveler. We don't know. Could we'll be. see. Yeah. Jeremy makes an unexpected deal with Liv, then makes a decision that is devastating to Elena. I got nothing. Nope. But we'll see. And then Stefan and Caroline share a special moment of friendship. Wow, it's happening quicker than I thought. Yeah. Um, actually, just real quick, uh, it, Jeremy makes an unexpected deal with Liv that could be something to do with Bonnie. Like, if Bonnie's in trouble... Mm. Something to get her back, something to stop her from being the anchor, switch people, things. Now, I, I'm curious if, if Bonnie is able to not be the anchor anymore. Is she going to get her witch powers back? We don't know. We'll see. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. After that, uh, okay, so they share a moment of friendship. And then finally, a terrifying turn of events at the Traveler's Camp leads to the appearance of their mysterious leader, Marcos. Dun dun dun. Da 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 dum dum dum. It's gotta be something to do with the, the blood that the travelers have been collecting from the doppelgangers, and now that it's fused and actually works, which is why they took so much in the first place, it didn't work. That's right. why they want that's why they want Stefan alive rather than the other one, because they already have the blood. Right. So Right. Um so after the blood is actually working, then Marcos is going to come into town. So, I wonder if he's going to be a familiar face. I doubt it. He'll Watch he's a Damon doppelganger. <laughs> oh God, Damon has a doppelganger now. Imagine. That'd be interesting. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. I, but I, I believe they said that they are the last of the doppelgangers. Yeah, they are so. the last. Yeah. All right. All right. So I wish it would be cool. It's be cool to see uh, two Ians running around. That would be funny. So that's it. Smolder holders. That's it. That's it. Any final comments, Dom? I'm actually looking forward to next week. Me too, actually, surprisingly. Yeah. See, Seriously. see, you were, before the break, you were getting kind of bored Tired of the episodes. Of yeah. Yeah. And when it piqued my interest again. When it came back from the break, I was starting to wobble away from it a little bit and and now this actually this episode it sounds really exciting to me i really want to know more about Liv and luke and uh those characters the mystery behind them is what's drawing me and i think at this point there was no mystery left i, I kind of knew everything everybody and and whatnot we we knew where Catherine was going and we you know i i think we called Catherine was going to switch into elena's body and all that so it was like all stuff that we kind of knew was coming and it, when it came and it happened it was just like all right we kind of knew there's some mystery behind these characters now so it, it's it's keeping me around yeah. keeping me entertained interested yeah me too i'm quite i'm ready i'm ready for next week already so yeah we're we're what 16 episodes in the 22 23 episode season so we're getting there 22. 22, yeah. So, uh, we got... One uh, of our shows has 21 episodes. Maybe it was this one. Uh, I think it might be the originals. Maybe it was the originals. I don't yeah. remember. One of the shows has 21 episodes. I'm just not sure which. Yeah, so, I don't know. This one has usually been 22. Um, yeah. So... Oh, most of the CW shows are 22. Yeah, so we're getting there. We have, like, a month and a half left, and then we're done. Yeah. So... All right. So, anyway... Where can the people find you, sir? Uh, down below. Uh, Phenomenon. P-H-E-N-O-M-E-D-O-M. -E -E okay. And that's on Twitter? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. You decide. Well, uh, you can find me also below my name, my face, at Twitter, on Twitter, at Thilladren, T-H-I-L-L-A-D-R-E-N. You can find all of us on tvcaptive.com. There's more than just this pod, the, you know, the podcast there. There's other kinds of interesting articles and stuff. You can find these podcasts on YouTube, Google+, Facebook, Twitter. You can Gmail us. It's all the same thing, ASOTV Podcast. Uh, follow us. Send us some questions. Send us some comments. What we did right, what we did wrong, anything like that. Give us some um, feedback. Feedback us. The good kind of feedback, not that annoying, crazy sound that microphones do um i have been your host mike with me is dom have a lovely whatever time of day it is i I'm, I'm trying to make feedback in my mic but it's not gonna happen not gonna happen no i can make a goat scream into this microphone but uh, you know 
Don't do it. It's apparently that goat scream is copyrighted. Yes, it is. No, apparently that goat scream going off 20 times is copyrighted. Yes. Because why not? If I could copyright it, I would. Mm-hmm. 